Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is me again, Teacher Pauline, and today I will be discussing about sets using attributes to make collections. Did you realize that you were thinking mathematically the last time you sorted or put things away, be it dishes, laundry, or groceries? Even more to the point, did you realize that from birth on, infants and toddlers are developing their ability to think about patterns and sets in ways that become explicitly mathematical as they reach school age? Math isn't just a number recognition, but it is a pivotal part of thinking and understanding the environment we live in. To encourage mathematical thinking at such an early stage, one way is to acknowledge and support a baby's natural inclination to sort according to their senses. What you like is an attribute. Number is an attribute. Identifying attributes is one of the precursor concepts of math that begins to develop in infants and toddlers and can be supported by quality interactions with caregivers. Games to play at home using attributes for math thinking. When children use attribute language to describe and organize objects when playing games at home, they are preparing their brain for math thinking. There are tons of opportunities to use attributes when talking with your kids at home, whether as a fan game or as part of regular cleaning and organizing activities. Here are some ideas that don't require special materials. I spy. One way to help kids think about attribute language is the classic game, I spy. To play, someone finds an object that everyone in the room can see and describes it using one characteristic, as in, I spy something yellow, and other players guess is it a banana? The whole family can take turns and get in on the fun. If you want to, you can make it even more mathy by using attributes that encourage mathematical thinking, such as numbers, shapes, measurement, and location words. I spy something round. I spy something that has three parts. I spy something bigger than my hand. I spy something heavier than the dog. I spy something taller than daddy. I spy something that is a pear. I spy something that is under the window. I spy something wider than your arms. I spy something half the size of you. Crazy train. Another game idea is building a crazy train with just about anything you have around the house. Pencils, apples, keys, pillows, containers, toys, and books are all good choices for crazy chain games to play at home. Gather them together on a table or the floor and have the kids pick an object to be the locomotive or the first object in the crazy train. In our game, the toy truck is the locomotive. Then look at your other objects. Which one is something in common with the truck? As long as your child can justify their choice, they can add that item to the train. We choose a green dye because it shares the same color as the truck. Next is an orange dye because the dyes have the same shape. The goal of the game is to connect all the items in a long chain with each pair of objects connected by a unique attribute. Sorting your shoes. Is there a place in your house where people take their shoes off when they come in? If so, that's a natural opportunity for talking about attributes. It can be a household cleaning project or a game. Either way, it all starts with a question. How should we organize these shoes? 
When the sorting begins, attribute language is unavoidable. Maybe it makes sense to organize the shoes by owner. All of Nana's shoes over here and all of Tony's over there. Maybe it makes sense to organize them according to purpose. Is sneakers in one place, sandals next to them, and all the rain boots lined up against the wall. Let's wash that mat right into laundry day. Whether you have a machine at home or visit a laundromat, there are all kinds of math involved in doing laundry. And there are all kinds of ways that children of all ages can join in the thinking and doing. The washing and folding will take a little longer when you involve your little helper, but those extra minutes of math time together are worth it. Sort it out. Everyone has their own rules about sorting clothes before and after washing. They all call for logical thinking that even toddlers can understand. Here are a few ideas about turning often what feels like a chore into math conversations and games. Clothes toss. Put out one basket for light colors and a second one for dark colors. Let everyone take turns tossing an item from the pile of dirty clothes into the correct basket. With toddlers, cheer and give a shout out that names the rule. Yay! You got your light blue shirt into the light basket. You might do this as a kind of bean bag game. You get two points for tossing an item into the correct basket. Only one point if it doesn't quite make into the basket. Matching. Two-year-old children will enjoy finding and creating a pile of their own clothes. By the age of three, many children are able to match sacks for themselves and others. Chat about the math, noticing and asking them about how they make a match. Older children can sort in more complex ways such as pajamas and school clothes or even type of clothing and family member who wears it. Fold and pile. Children ages 3 and up often enjoy folding flat items such as towels and can get quite good at it. Lining up the corners lets children explore symmetry. As children get older, the conversations can get more elaborate. Predicting. Before sorting, encourage children to make and explain predictions about which basket is likely to end with the most items. Then talk about the results, making it math time without them even noticing. Making comparisons. As children get older, there are plenty of ways to keep score as tallies or graphs. This kind of keeping track allows you to chat about how your laundry stacks up. Tally how many items get tossed into each basket or keep a running count of how many are socks, shirts, etc. or who has the most clothes that need washing or folding. There are all kinds of interesting measurement comparisons possible which type of clothing has the most which piles of folded laundry is biggest tallest why might the pile of jeans be bigger or taller than the pile of shirts even though the number of shirts is greater than the number of jeans keep the record and use it to predict and compare to what happens the next laundry day First and second graders might want to turn some of the comparisons into graphs. At home activity cards, sets, and sorting. Five Creatures. This book by Emily Jenkins includes three humans and two cats in one house that allows a lot of opportunities for sorting. This printable activity card in both English and Spanish invites home explorations with sets and sorting using the book. A Pair of Socks by Stuart J. Murphy. This book uses illustrations and language to highlight qualities a sock could have. 
This downloadable activity card provides fun activities at home while developing children's recognition of attributes as well as deepen their matching abilities when dealing with sets and sorting of objects. Exactly the opposite. This book by Tana Hoban contains photos that inspire conversation, showing two items that are opposites in some interesting way. This printable Spanish and English activity card can accompany parents for opportunities to engage children at home. Is it red? Is it yellow? Is it blue? This wordless book encourages conversations about an engaging attribute, color, while also inspiring questions about what is happening from page to page. This printable activity card can take the discussion to the at-home setting. Opuestos or Opposites by Cincho Wheel. This book is in Spanish and English and is great for discussions around sets and sorting. Explorations of different cultures intermixed with important early math concepts can still provide fun activities at home. This activity card can go home with parents to further the math thinking in more settings beyond the school or library. Sets are basic for children's thinking and learning. They are also basic to our base 10 number system or any number system for that matter. One of the most important jobs of each number is to describe how many there are in a set of things. Before we can figure out how many apples there are, we have to decide which things are apples and which are not. Once we've created the set of things that are apples, perhaps by separating them from the oranges, then we can count them. Counting requires a set. And as a result, the properties of sets have a large influence on the base 10 number system and on mathematics. Thank you for listening. For more related videos about this topic, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye!